Do you know what I find interesting? No? Short-lived states. There are many examples. Well-known examples, lesser-known examples, and examples you think you might have heard of, but you actually have not. And in this video, we're going to talk about the forgotten state of Slovenes, Croats, and Serbs. It existed for only 33 days and would later merge into the kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes that later would become Yugoslavia. Stay tuned. I'm Stefan and I'm Dutch and I make videos about history for you. And if you find it interesting, well, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. To understand where the state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs came from, we need to go back to its origins. Croatia had close ties with the Habsburg Empire. After the Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867, the Croatian lands came under Hungarian jurisdiction. There were ideas of making a tripartite empire. Actually, Archduke Franz Ferdinand supported this. He was assassinated in the Bosnian city of Sarajevo and this gave impulse to anti-Serbianism. The cross fought on different fronts in the Austro-Hungarian army and it is believed around 137,000 Croat men lost their lives during the First World War. The war caused severe food shortages in Austro-Hungary and in 1918 the Allies were fighting a disintegrating army. In the spring of that year, Croat political parties issued the Zagreb resolution that advocated for a state of Croats, Slovenes and Serbs. Towards the end of the war, nationalist uprisings occurred throughout Austro-Hungary. Emperor Karl issued the Imperial Manifesto on the 16th of October 1918 which advocated for a federalist structure by granting white autonomy to its peoples. On the 25th of October 1918, in Agram, now Zagreb, the Croatian parliament declared Croatia and Lomitia part of a sovereign state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs. It claimed territory of today's Slovenia, Croatia and Bosnia-Herzegovina. Do notice that what is today Slovenia and Croatia back then were still part, some parts um, were uh, given to Italy after the First World War. There was a whole Fiume question, which I'll address in another video. Um, it also claimed parts of Hungary and the state would soon expand. Ideas for a Yugoslav state originated in the 19th century. In 1914, the Serbian Nish Declaration was issued that made a South Slav state one of the war aims of Serbia. And that did happen after a month of existence of the state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs. In 1917, the Corfu Declaration was issued, in which Nikola Pasic and Ante Trumbic, who was from the Yugoslav Committee, made the creation of a Kingdom of Yugoslavia possible. The National Council of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs too agreed to unification with Serbia, although its finalization wasn't made clear yet. Some Croats, such as Stefan Radic, politician and founder of the Croatian People's Peasant Party, HPSS, were happy when the South Slav state was proclaimed, but others were not happy, such as Ante Pavelic, secretary of the Croatian Party of Rights in 1918 and the future leader of the Croatian Eustasia. He recalled in his memoirs, 1st of December 1918, the day Prince Regent Alexander officially proclaimed the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes was a sad and blurry day. People passed by the streets with nausea, without expression and with a bitter taste in their mouths. That day, Croatia was put to the grave by the policy of Greatest Serbia and there was deep conviction that she would never exist again. Croatian and Slovenian ex-Habsburg soldiers formed new Yugoslav units and occupied territories that were previously part of Hungary and included the Banat, Baka, Baranja, Southern Hungary, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Dalmatia, Montenegro, Croatia and Slovenia. There was a conflict with the Slovenes of Carinthia from the end of 1918 till the summer of 1919 which left 100 people dead. The new South Slav state would emerge weaker after the First World War than other countries in Central Europe think of Poland. The reason was that the Paris peacemakers weren't too interested in this new state. They saw the Balkans as a troublesome realm of continuous violence and sure Serbia emerged as a victor after the First World War. It was seen as the first victim of Austro-Hungarian aggression. But still the Balkans was and remained a messy place according to the Western politicians. The Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes was only recognized by the Allies in 1919 and its exact borders were to be determined at the Paris Peace Conference. 
That means that the state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs was also an unrecognized state. Now there was the kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. Do notice more people groups lived in the area such as Montenegrins, Macedonians, Bosnian Muslims as well as minorities of Hungarians, Germans, Italians and Albanians. In 1929 this kingdom became known as the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. What Trumbic and Pasic failed to settle was the thorny issue of whether the future Yugoslavia would be a federal state with far-reaching local autonomy for its constituent peoples or a centralized unitary state. While Trumbic believed that he had signed up for a federal model, Pasic clearly aspired to a unitary state that would best serve Serbian interests. This issue was to reassert itself quickly after the end of the war. And so the South Slav state was destined for trouble. If you like to learn about the story of the rise of Yugoslavia, you click right here. And if you think that this was interesting and you're like, hmm, I want to know about other shortlist states, well, I have a playlist for you. You can find it right here. Um, consider becoming a patron so I can make trips to Zagreb like this. I want to thank you for watching. Big shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support, guys. And all the best from Zagreb, Croatia.